T the TCs, guys. The TCs. That's not a town center. That's a... I don't even know what that is. Holy crap. Okay. Well, this is going to be an interesting game. Do I have, for some reason, some mod enabled? Because these don't look like houses either. I, do I have... No. I mean, what? Okay. You know what? Let's just let let's just let it happen. Just just let it happen. It's okay. It, it's it's all gonna be fine. Um, Gamish is just gonna fix his hotkeys and then we're gonna go. Um, I I probably have some kind of mods enabled. I could probably check. Let me just. I'm gonna tab out real quick while the game is paused and find out what godforsaken mods I have enabled on AOE2 right now because <laughs> I don't know. Um, I must have messed around with it and not paid attention. I have architecture renovation, I have Pesquarius Pes graphics pack, I have architecture for Rise of Kings, and I have the shadow fix, the alignment grid, and I think that's it. I, I, I don't know if they're enabled though, that's the thing. I don't obviously have the grid enabled, and I obviously don't have Pussywood enabled, so don't ask me what's going on. I only run the stream, I don't actually know what's happening. But it's okay, this is going to be entertaining nonetheless. The game still works anyway. I, as far as I can tell, I don't have a Zara's um, texture pack on, uh, according to my subscribe list. But whatever, yes. let's introduce the teams and the players in this yes. 3v3 regicide last man standing game. Um, down to the southwest of the map, in the green, we've got Owenis playing as the Berbers. His ally, I don't actually know if it's his ally, hold on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. His ally up to the north west of the map in the orange we've got rustic septum playing as the teutons jesus christ his ally up to the north west of the map in the orange we've got rustic septum playing as the teutons and their final ally sheep slaughter playing on that flank position as the franks there up to the north so team number one in the on the left side of the map in green orange and teal on the right side of the map we have yap playing in the red as the portuguese the reason why i chose this map is because he likes to wall and and he's well known for it every time i've seen him play he throws up a massive stone wall around his economy and it takes him years to complete so what i decided to do was choose a map where you can't wall because there's literally holes in every tree possible and maybe he'll find a way to do it and I think it's a nice experiment just to see what happens here. In the pocket position in the yellow we've got In Flames, he's playing as the Ethiopians and uh, that's the only African Civ here I believe unless I am not paying attention. I am not paying attention. Uh, Owenis is playing as the Berbers. And down to the south in the grey we've got Gomisha playing as the Turks. So that's team number two on the right side. Yes, it is uh, actually regicide, and uh, I'm going to turn the game sound up slightly. I don't know if I'm just deaf, or if it just seems really low, but you know what? Let's, let's do that. Let's make it loud. There we go. So yeah, um, like I was saying, um, it is regicide. The kings are in the towers of the players and uh, you see Yap here we have a look at his tower up in the north you see his kings sitting inside of there all kingly in his tower and you gotta you gotta tell me now um oh, <laughs> is the is the sound too high or not it is actually three oh yeah there's portuguese as well sorry guys i just don't pay attention when i when i say these things i'm just like reeling off the names of the civs and then the and, and the players and the teams but i don't pay any attention to what i just said uh, i don't know what it what it is but i never always i never consider the portuguese as an african civilization funnily enough maybe because they're not from africa but um maybe that's something to do with it i still have no idea why the foundations of these buildings look like age of empires one um and i I'm, I'm, I'm ex excited to see what this game has in store for us, not just for the game itself, but for the mods that I may have accidentally installed and are going to change the way that the game looks. I, I love it. I, I think it's great. So, uh, yeah. Um, Portugal... Is Portugal in Africa, though, or is it still in Europe? I mean... 
Madeira, I would understand if you say that was in Africa, because it's off the coast of Africa, and it's owned by Portugal, but I wouldn't say Portugal was Africa, though, is it? I, I don't know. Maybe, it's definitely not on the tectonic plate, that's for sure, unless I've just been poorly educated by our shitty school system. Maybe. Yeah, uh, a, the, a, the goal, yeah, no problem. This is, uh, I think this is the, uh, some other mod. <laughs> yeah, the gold's different. Don't, don't ask me why. It just is. Uh, stone as well. It's, it's all it's all tiny, teeny, tiny bits of stone and gold out here. Isn't it beautiful? But yeah, I chose this map because as um, I chose this map because uh, it's very open. It's very good for aggression. And uh, obviously there's a lot of resources as well, with players having these elephants and their uh, ostriches and their zebra, uh, or zebra if you're American. Um, you know, it's funny, I get I get so many comments saying I don't know how to pronounce things right because I say it the English way. Um, because, funnily enough, British English is different to American English. Yes. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we spell things differently and we say things differently. But I get called out. I remember seeing on 4chan once, there was a, a, an Age of Empires 2 discussion on 4chan, and people were like, oh, Zero Empires, he sounds like he's got Down Syndrome because he doesn't know how to say words properly. <laughs> it's hilarious, because if you come to England, that's how it's said. And uh, I find it even more funny when you consider that uh, American, or well, American English, is derived from British English. So if anything, we are more right. But uh, I'm not going to get into that argument, I just find it really funny, and uh, it always makes me laugh. Um, <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, so Portuguese on the flank and also Turks on the flank. To be honest with you, I wouldn't really want the Turks on the flank. I, I much prefer to play Turks from the, the safe pocket position. Um, that, that's what I like because I like to go like to the post-imperial age with the Turks. I like to have a, my free boom and I like to go straight into sort of gunpowder and... Um, you know, bombard cannons, janissaries, hand cannons, and the works. Now, that could be a lot of fun. But when you're on the flank, you're forced into that sort of early conflict. You're forced into that feudal aggression, potentially. But this is a lower-rated game. A lot of these players are not the highest-rated. So maybe we won't see a huge amount of feudal aggression on both flanks. But with Gamisha in the south, I'm almost certain he'll play aggressively down here in the feudal age. He's on the way up now, 23 population. He's not even taking his elephant. This guy, this guy, he doesn't even care for the elephant right now. What's that all about? And he's going for the gold. So clearly he's gonna go for archers, 23 population, standard archer rush kind of thing. And uh, green player, Owenis is uh, also up to feudal as well. He's just actually pretty quick, 22 population for him. And what the hell is going on with that town center? I don't know, it's different. We can deal with that, I'm sure. Uh, the barracks as well. But um, Berbers for him. And no sign of a second feudal building. Now, this is exactly what I was talking about. Oh, I don't have the timer on. Sorry about that, Merlin. Um, but yeah, the... This is exactly what I was talking about with that Nikov game, right? As soon as you get to the feudal age, you need the 175 wood to build that feudal building. Because otherwise, you're going to be late. And now, over here, two arch... Are they archery ranges? Oh my god, this is going to be so hard for me to cast this game. Like, that's not an archery range, dude. That's not an archery range. It, what is that? It's just, it's like three different buildings have just been mushed together. And that's like the really, really deformed child of the three buildings that have decided to to combine. But anyway, um, it's fine. Clearly, there's too much incest in Gamisha's buildings. That doesn't make any sense. Whatever. Anyway, uh, Onus here, up with the stable, and um, gonna go into scouts. And the Berbers are a pretty good sort of cavalry civilization. Um, they have the really, really great bonus of cheaper stable units. Minus 20% from the castle age. Now, obviously, he's not gonna benefit from that in the feudal age, obviously, since it's from the castle age only. But if he does go into um, sort of scouts, it means that he's going to have to gather more food. And then when he gets to the castle age, he's obviously going to have um, the ability to go straight into knights, which are going to be really nice and cheap. So knights, good. Very good indeed. Now, it seems like I've lost the ability to scroll around the map with the arrow keys. I feel really sad about this because um, the game's gone quite choppy and I can't scroll around the map like I normally do. Maybe if I tab out and tab back in, that'll fix it. I doubt it. This is AOEHD we're talking about, so probably not. Nope, still broken. Can't use the arrow keys to navigate, but 
whatever, that's fine. Uh, but it seems like right now Owen is pretty defensive. Now, when you do a scout rush, you don't play defensively. It's not what you do. You get aggressive, you get up in their face, you get up in their grill. You do some scouting and find out what your uh, enemy's doing. Onis needs to go and find out. Onis needs to go and find out what is going on with the Gamisha right now. If he is going for the... Uh, uh, sorry, if, if Gamish is going for archers, he does not want to go for Spim, and it's just a waste of resources. It just doesn't make sense. There's no point. So, yeah, I mean, Owenis right now probably should just keep going scouts and get aggressive with them. I do like, though, how he's throwing a couple of outposts out. This is good. A little bit of uh, visibility on this very open map. No real walling going on for him, so it looks like Gamish is going to take a pretty big advantage in here. As he pushes forwards. Uh, I cannot disable mods halfway through the game going, but that's okay because I'm quite enjoying not knowing what's around every corner. I don't know what is going to surprise us next and I'm quite excited to find out. So just another layer of excitement in this game. So Kalis, uh, sorry not Kalis, Kalis chose the settings for this game. He's not even in the game. Gamisha even coming into this wood line here. Maybe that's a compliment Kalis. I, I think you know you're so good at this game that I'm assuming Gamisha is you. Um, but yeah, Gamisha coming in here and um, killing a couple of villas. Of course, Owen is going to run away, but where's he going to get his wood from now? There's not really a nice wood line for him. He's got the acacias and he's got the baobabs, uh, baobabs on the left, uh, on the right of his base. But the baobabs are on the left of the acacias, if you know what I'm saying. And uh, yeah, uh, it's yes, it's fine. Apparently, according to the players, the teams are screwed up. I don't think they are screwed up, I just think it's diplomacy coming into action here. Uh, and I'm waiting for Onus to really do something at the moment. He's got a few scouts, like I say, he's defending. And really I'm just focusing on this because that's the only action that's going on right now. Up in the north of the map, there's Yap. And what was I saying about the whole walling thing? He's given it a good shot, isn't he? Look at that fucking massive wall out here towards this little oasis, down towards this tree line, this little oasis, down towards this tree line, which he can't wall because it's full of gaps. And then down a bit more and he's got another massive wall off on this left-hand side. And uh, that's going to come all the way up to the back, which is going to join to this wall here. But sadly, you can't build over cracked ground. You can build on cracked ground. But your buildings die really quickly. So I don't know. Maybe you can't wall crack. I don't even care. This is just funny to see these walls. Because he's only just built the barracks. And taking his sweet, sweet time about this one. Um, the front of his base is still wide open though. And I'm just going to enjoy watching him attempt to wall this really unwallable map. It's, yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway. Oh my god. What's going on over here? First acceptance reached the castle age. And with it brings more really, really, really broken buildings. It's like they've taken a TC and put it in a blacksmith and then attached it to whatever the hell this is. I would not have thought that was a barracks. I thought that was all one building. If that is a barracks? How? What is this thing? This is not a barracks. This is just confusing. This stable has a house attached to it. This house has another very small house attached to it. It's hilarious. I'm loving it. I just don't know what's going to happen next. I'm so excited to find out. Look at this one. It's like, what's going on here? The thing is, right, guys, good RTS design comes from being able to identify what a building is at a glance, okay? So, the, the unit, the buildings in Age of Empires, even though they have different styles for the blacksmiths, they're all the same shape. They're all an L shape. They all have the, you know, defining features. All the barracks, they're all big squares. They're all bulky, and they all resemble a similar shape. The archery range is the same. The markets say all the buildings of all the architecture sets are alike. And then they go and do this. Like, this is a, uh, I don't know which mod this is. I don't really care, but I mean, it's, I'll, I'll link all the mods I've got enabled after, got enabled after.